What is up everybody, my name is Hyken and this is the AJAZZ AK33 RGB. Before we get going, I'd just like to drop a quick reminder to like, subscribe, share if you enjoyed the video, and please do remember to follow the Twitch stream, twitch.tv slash hik1n as well. And uh, yeah, let's get into it. This is an 82 key keyboard, so it's about five keys short of a traditional 10 keyless keyboard. The layout is also completely different. We do have dedicated arrow keys here as well as some of the navigation keys, however instead of being in the little cluster above the arrow keys, they are now along the side of the keyboard. This keyboard cost me $48, ordered directly off of Amazon.com. In the box, you get the keyboard, a detachable mini USB cable, a brush to clean the keycaps, a keycap puller, and a manual. The keyboard also comes in black or white with black switches which are kind of like red switches however a little bit heavier and blue switches which are the clicky and tactile switches. I got the blue switches with the black keyboard as I'm sure you've already seen. The white color only comes with blue backlighting and the black color does come with RGB as well as white. Alright let's start getting into some of the details starting with these keycaps. These are laser etched ABS, so at the very least you don't have to worry about these legends fading, however these keycaps do absorb a ton of finger oil, like it is really bad. But you know, at least you can read the characters. There is also the issue of a lot of non-standard keys on this keyboard. Basically everything on the right side of the spacebar on that bottom section of the keyboard, it's non-standard. So the right shift, the arrow keys, stuff like that. Also the function key is up top in the function row, which is just kind of weird placement. I have never seen a function key up there before and it definitely took a little bit of getting used to. So because of these non-standard keycaps, you are not going to be able to swap out any of these non-standard keys. Yes, you can swap out like say the number row for instance, or you know, use some of the rubber keycaps from Taihao, something like that. But really that's about where your customization options are going to end unless you're fine with leaving every non-standard key in place and just swapping out the ones you can. But then your keyboard would look kind of weird. Up next, we're talking about the switches, which are not great either. Again, I did get blue switches and they are some kind of a jazz brand, so they are their own cherry knockoff. These require a little bit too much pressure for my liking, more than regular blue switches, and I'm not really a big fan of that, especially for gaming. At the very least, this keyboard isn't terrible with the kind of internal rattle extra noise that you'd get when you're hammering away on a keyboard. You'll hear it in the sound test more, but this is definitely not the worst internal rattle that I've heard from a keyboard. I will say, however, these stabilizers are not good at all. They are very noisy and they don't do a very good job at keeping the keys, well, stable. The enter key and the shift key, they all wobble around a lot. The space bar, incredibly rattly. They're just, uh, I hate these stabilizers. Let's, uh, let, let's, let's just hear the sound test for these. Yeah, they're they're not they're not great. Not great at all. All that being said, the RGB on this keyboard is really my favorite part of it. It actually looks really great. This light colored aluminum backplate really does a fantastic job at reflecting the lighting back at you, and that has to be my favorite part of this keyboard. The build quality feels decent thanks to this backplate, and we also do get a glossy plastic for the back and the sides. Everything's fine there, I'm not really worried about this keyboard falling apart on you or anything, the switches don't feel loose or anything like that, so we're all good there. The back also features two kickstand feet, which is some pretty standard stuff for keyboards. 
I also do have to say that this detachable mini USB cable is a huge plus. It lets you add a little extra customization here as I did with this Asseni cable. So it sounds as if there was software for this keyboard at one point in time. However, it is long gone as is this company's website. However, they are still selling the keyboards. So thanks to a user over at r slash mechanical keyboards, there is a software that you can use for this. However, bear in mind that it is a modded third party software. I'm not going to be reviewing it because this keyboard does function just fine without it. You're still able to change lighting effects. However, I did see that you could change stuff like the pulling rate in the software. So if that's something that you're interested in, I would definitely suggest checking the software out. I will leave a link down below. If not, I'm sure you'll be just fine without it. Okay, so before we wrap this review up, it's a really quick story time. So I bought this keyboard from a different listing than the one that I'm going to be putting in the description down below. I believe that it was some uh, Ronson Way mechanical gaming keyboard was what this was marketed as. However, I knew that was kind of fishy when I got the keyboard and the name Ajaz was all over it and the name Ajaz is on the space bar. So I did a little bit of digging and by digging, I mean, I scrolled to the bottom of the product page that I ended up buying the keyboard off of. And there it was, the AK33 Ajaz. That's the listing you're gonna wanna buy it from. I'm not sure about this other company, whether they're buying the keyboard and then selling it for the same exact price. I don't think that's how profit works unless they're buying it from somewhere else where they can get it slightly cheaper and then upsell it a little bit on Amazon. I don't know what the deal is, but um, don't buy it from the same one that I did, just buy it from Ajaz directly. Overall, this is a decent keyboard. I, I really can't fully recommend this though because of these non-standard keycaps. If they were non-standard and they were good, you know, PBT keycaps, then maybe I'd still recommend this, but I really can't give this my endorsement with these terrible keycaps and these not great switches either. I mean, it's... It's not good. Those are really two big, big components of the keyboard for me. And having those be this bad is, it's not good. I would definitely suggest passing on this keyboard. For the $50 price point, you could definitely find some better options. All right, everybody, that's gonna do it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. Please do remember to leave a like and subscribe on your way out. Check out the Twitch stream, all that good stuff. And I will see you in the next one. Peace.